Sick. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, back to after a long time. Yeah, it's, it's been a long ass time. It's the dynamic duo. Uh the type of dudes that your mom warned you about. <laughs> it's the son and the other. Hooray. Hooray. My name is Brian TV. To the left of me, as always, is Zach the Audio Maniac Veteran. We're so happy. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> which, which we're noise, so happy which you guys you want? could join us. We really did it, huh? All you crazy laughing kids. We're fucking back. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. I don't know why I'm speaking so quietly. I guess I'm just a little nervous, you know? It's been a minute. It's been a minute. It's been a minute. Haven't been on the mic. Haven't done anything in a while. I know. Super creepy, some might say. But Super creepy. For the most part. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to try and move this bad boy. Yeah, move it wherever you want, man. You know what? Let's move this. Oh, let's see, but I don't know how much that's gonna fuck with the cameras. Else. The cameras yeah. that we had set. Yeah. Well, I'm sure it's fine. But I'm sure. Buy some time. Fine. Go ahead and talk and tell people what you've been up to. Well, you know, it's been uh, it's been an, oh, he's he's gone. It's been an interesting uh, several months. I mean, we haven't done one of these in probably. Seven, eight months? Almost enough time for a full fetus to be born? Um, it's been a long time, man. And uh, a lot has happened over those last eight months for the both of us. Um, I think it has been that long. I think it's been about that long. I know I've been doing, uh, last summer was all crazy. I was going from festival to festival, working on... Um, You've been working at uh, 200 for the last year, just like an absolute madman. Yeah, man. It's been that long, dude. Oh, well, somebody just murdered us for our car. Um, I somehow got back in a fortnight. <laughs> yes. I was, I was eight, months, eight months later, and that's everything veteran <laughs> has to report. He managed to, he managed to encompass... Eight months that's worth it. of that's life. All of, that's all of life. You know, so. um, I'm working at the club now. Yeah, yeah. So let's now. give a, you know, come on. You, you act like you've I am, you I'm know, doing stuff. I'm I, just, you know, I, I'm, I'm doing I appreciate nothing. you not, you know, you know, being a, you know. But come on. It's, it's, been a, it's been a long time. Yeah. You know, first and foremost, we hope you guys are okay, bro. We mm-hmm. hope you guys are having a good time and you're alive and then you're kicking. Um, it has been crazy, bro. Uh, Veteran and I both work at the same place now, which yep. is very cool. Veteran's growing up. He's an adult uh, or slowly becoming an adult, which is very cool. Um, I'm bartending now officially, which is great. So uh, I'm very, very happy and excited about that. Um, I mean, yeah. we're still we're still just uh, I mean, <sighs> I don't know. We're still, you know, we're still grooving along. We're, we're still grooving, along. right? It's there living. Still, we're just living right now. It's, you know, we're living. What else is there to say right now? Yeah. Are we plateauing? Maybe. Who knows? I don't know. What do we? What do we? What do we? What do we, what do we you don't know. You know. Uh, what do I know? Are we plateauing? What's going on? I don't know. What happens in eight months? What can? What can we? As you know, as a people, I don't know. What do we? What do we know? We. Can I don't do know. It's eight months. months. Or it's in. Life has been good. Zoe's good. You know what I mean? Like, think. Speak of the devil, bro. Speak of the devil. And she shall let's reign. See, let's see if we can. Hello? Hello, you're on live with Brian and Zach. Hold on, man. Hold on. Hello? Look at this. Hello? Hi. Can you see me? Hi, baby. Hi. I'm on my way. I just want to let you know. Um... I got caught talking to Hannah. Okay, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> hold on, because you're live on the air, bit, uh, mi amor. So, hold on. Let me, yeah, I'm sorry. I apologize. I no, 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 you're good. Do you want to say hi? Say hi to hi. the viewers. <laughs> okay, I'll talk to you in a bit. Okay, Aloha, bye. Is everything, is everything uh, okay, all right, all right, bye. All right, Ladies I guess all Ohio months, kids are just. Uh, in eight months, look at how long this, this man's waddle has gotten. Eight it months, is. bro. Tino's doing good. Will's in good health. Um, things are moving along. Life is happening. 
A lot um, of, uh, yeah, you know. For me personally, I've been dealing uh, with life from an existential point of view. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, when Kurt died, uh, a good friend of mine, Kurt, passed away during those eight months. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it was a lot, you know, enough to, to really, like, kind of... I don't know. It was a lot of stuff, and I think for me, from a creative point of view, it really kind of like uh, shook me to the core. And so I'm still kind of reeling from that, but it's caused me a lot of insane existential dread. And I was like, well, what's gonna, <coughs> what's gonna make me feel better, you yeah. know, as far as that than doing the original thing that I did when I came to doing it, just getting on the mic and just talking about it all. So today we're going to talk about it. We're back into these motherfucking guts, bro. Today mm-hmm. we're going to talk about the realness, bro. We're going to talk about death, bro. Dealing with death, hanging out with death, do what, how you feel about death, what life has in store for you about death, what you hope for it, all that cool kooky shit, dog. That's what we're going to talk about today. But first, what? before we get into that, let's start with something good. Veteran in the last eight months, something good. That has happened to you in the past one, uh, in the last past eight months. Uh, uh, getting, getting this job for sure. Getting this job for sure has been a really good thing in the last eight months. Yeah, baby boy. Yeah. Going a little, going a little crazy on the sound effects. I can hear them louder than I can hear us. Oh, I know. It's pretty awesome. But we're not supposed to be heard that loud. And all this is all in single tracks. So yeah, he can, he can do whatever he wants. I can wants change everything. I'm a madman. I'm magical. That's the right. job. Uh, that's good. Uh, the, job the job is great. Getting the opportunities to uh, DJ left and right, uh, come up and present themselves. I get a lot of chances to do it at the club as well, which is nice. Uh, I still find times to... Be with friends that I don't get to see regularly, which is nice. I I am really starting to notice and uh, appreciate since I haven't been like around open mics a lot in the last eight months. Whenever I do get over to one of those places or I see, you know, one of the homies from the mic scene, it's just really nice. Yeah. It's just a really nice time. And it's like, oh, wow, I miss hanging out with you homies. Yeah, yeah, 100%. So it makes me grateful for those times when I get to see them. Hell yeah, dog. Uh, good for me yeah, in the past good, eight what's months. What's good for you in the last eight months? Um, something, good. something good. I'd probably have to say a renewed love uh, for uh, comedy. You know, I essentially spent the last eight months, nine months um, learning how to become a bartender. Yeah. And so... Uh, I had to take a step back from stuff like that. And now that I'm actually able to do what I'm doing and understand what I'm doing. Like it's, it's, uh, I, the, the, that crazy hunger is back, you know? And like Ron Bush, I, I always tell this story to people, you know, that Ron Bush told me once and Ron Bush is a comedian out here um, in Los Angeles, California, wonderful guy uh, and a great comedian, but has been doing yeah. this for a long time. And I remember we were talking, I was talking to Ron Bush and uh, Magic Meows and I was like, he was like, oh, well, I just got this new job, like, da 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 and, you know, I'm just coming back. And I was like, I feel you, man. Like, I'm kind of in the same process looking for work, like, you know, and I'm, you know, I'm just worried, you know, da 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 Same old stuff that every comedian talks about. Um, and, in fact, I was talking with uh, Angela Corsa, rest in peace, who she, yeah. we also lost her. And, you know, we lost, there was a couple of people, you know. We this, lost, like, three or four different people over the last uh, eight months since we've been gone. Isn't that the crazy, but here's the thing, right? And I'm just talking to the people who maybe have been watching this since I started this, you know, with Sam almost four or five years ago. I don't think I've, you know, lost that many people in a row or that close to me in a row in the whole time that I've been out here. And maybe even in, even in Arizona. I mean, I think... That this has been back to back the most, uh, the most death that I've had to deal with in in my own life. Um, yeah. I don't know about you, but I, uh, you know, this has been really uh, the 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 closest the closest I've been to acknowledging death since I got hit by a car when I was twenty one, and like right. I when I got hit by that car, I was fully convinced for for a hot minute. That the car had killed me. I was like, you know, I was twenty one. I'm sorry. There was like a lot. You're in that weird fucking. I don't know. Like, like when you're twenty one, your brain is like secreting this like weird. There's stuff that's happening in your mind and your brain, and like you're trying things for the first time, and you're like getting this weird kind of like you're like reading a lot of like 
authors and like there's a lot of media that talks about you know dimensions and death and like you know like and so i think in that pe- in my peak of it all just kind of like getting stuck in like a, a circle you know that was i was i'm always fascinated with the circle and it's like when that car hit me and then i came back and like i was thinking about it, thinking about it and for like six months i'd be like no like i'm utterly like a hundred percent convinced that i'm fucking that I'm fucking gone, bro. Like, that I'm literally just kind of, like, running. And this was even before I had a full understanding of, like, um, of any, of really anything, man. I'm, like, I'm I'm kind of, like, you know, I grew up kind of like a stupid kid. And so it's, like, the idea of, you know, uh, you know, like, understanding other dimensions and death and, like, and even, like, uh, there's this type of death, too, where people think that it's, like, suicide, but it's, like, you know they're killing themselves because they believe that's what it takes to get to the next level of death like there's quantum suicide that's what it's called there's something called quantum suicide where people are kind of like they become obsessed with the idea that like you know that they have they have to die in order to leap to the next part of like the whole thing and so like i'm not saying that that's what happened you know but i think inadvertently i created sort of the same guidelines that those crazy people are talking about where it's like oh well i've died and i'm kind of like you know at that next fucking point where it was like you know all part of it but but you know even beyond that so it's like since i was 21 i'm 33 that means i went 12 years you know without dealing with death that close to me 12 years that's a long time there's six billion people in the world what is that a testament to is that just like is that because our circles are small like are we is it because we're just like we don't know that many people <clears throat> you know because like would it be different if we knew if you and i knew if we each knew 100 people on the regular that we just knew regularly saw them regularly like what are i mean is it a numbers game like is it just a, i mean that's that's got to be it like mathematically it's like you only know a certain amount of people if you only know six people over a span of 12 years you know your odds of the people that you know dying are are much less well, it's funny because I think what it is is it's been like a societal change because back when, you know, people were living in small little villages of like 60 to 100 people, you knew everybody that was getting born and dying in that village and it was hitting everybody the same. That's why there was some like more of a reverence and a uh, an acceptance with death. It's It was more common and more familiar Plus, people were tapping out at like forty. You know what I mean. So, it the people were. I'm getting talking about used now, though. I know. Hang on, I'm getting there. I think it's what happened when we kind of hit after World War II. Again, a lot of shit, you know, shifted after that. You know, the life expectancies went up drastically. We started having to deal with what do we do now that we're living a lot longer. Now that people are healthier, <laughs> a lot longer. How are we moving forward with that? And it's like, now, the more people you know, yes, the odds are higher that those people aren't going to make it as far as you are. Or, I, I'm, I'm distracted in my head. I'm distracted in my head by just another story that I, I know I refer to a lot, um, Personally, in my own life, when death happens, because it was just such a uh, a shocking thing that I feel like happened when I was brand new in the comedy scene. Like I was two two months in, three months in, and uh, I think it was I think it was right around the time Brody Stevens died. Um, and so everybody was bumming about that, and some grouchy older comedian got on the stage and was like, "Get used to it. This is the LA comedy scene." Get ready in the next 10 years, a lot of the people you know are going to be dead. And it's like, that's upsetting. It's very upsetting to hear someone just be so casual and like, this town's turnover rate is crazy. Because it might also just be like, like we live in a, a major metropolitan center. I think the the likelihood of you dying earlier is higher because of where we live. Yeah. You know? More cars on the road equals more accidents happening per day. More likelihood of you getting in a fatal I think you're crash. just high, motherfucker. I might be. I, hey, I might be. Um, you know, lower quality of air, lower air quality. Yeah, well, I'm, I, 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 I'm talking beyond that. I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not thinking. 
<laughs> Sudden duck attacks. Uh, <laughs> Who knows what could happen to you? Spaghetti slips. Yeah. Expired milk. Oh, yeah. That's the real. Nobody talks about that. Broken toes that leak a little bit of white cells into your blood and you start kind of fucking freaking out. I think that, I don't know. That's a, well, look, here, what I'm saying is, what, I, what I'm saying is, I'm talking about close, like to you within your circle. I'm not talking about overall. I'm talking like, you know, have you, I mean, have you, I don't, I, the, the, the fact that in this past year alone, 12 months, 365 days, 525,600 minutes, you know, like Mm -hmm. I've had to deal with more death. Than you have in the past 12 years. Yes. And and ever, bro. Back to back. A whole year back to back, bro. Like, I feel that. I mean, I get that. Sometimes motherfuckers have bad years, bro. I get that, bro. Like, so you hear these fucking crazy fucking stories about people who fucking just like, they, they, here, while I talk, you hit. It's kind of like a back and back thing. Okay. So. Right. Well, here, I just, I don't know. It's a lot, bro. And maybe just because, I, I, I wonder, I wonder if I were your age. And this happened at the same time. Would I would I still you know, is it an age thing? Am I taking this am I I've known my morale I I've, I've known my own mortality for a long time, bro. You know, I'm like I'm kinda I'm kinda always ready to go, you know, in that in that sense. Like I wouldn't be happy about it, but it's like I'm not worried about that. But Well you wouldn't be ha- you you wouldn't be anything about it, you'd be dead. Right, but I'm saying now. It's like you know, there's, I used to fear death, like really, really fear death. Like up to the point that I got, you know, after, after the car thing, it's like, I had, like, I would wake up at night, like, like freaking out, like, because I would think about what it would be like being dead, Where, you know, and it's like, I, you know, kids feel that everyone feels that I think that, but, but I just never, you know, I didn't, but then after the car hit me, I was like, oh damn, like, you know what I mean? Like. Stop. Go. After the car hit you. After the car hit me, um, I just kind of, you know, I was in that weird loop where I was like, well, I'm already dead. And then once I did that, I was like, oh, okay, well. I'm still in the hole. Yeah. Like, that's, I think, kind of the, you know, the Rick and Morty episode about the fear hole is kind of like that. It's like you almost kind of, what happens when you realize that? You know, you it's like that creepy pasta where the dude sees his wife or something and then he, you know, he's happy or whatever and then he looks at the lamp and he wakes up or it's like it's like any of that bullshit where or even like I said quantum suicide where it's like the other side, the other part of it, the other thing and it's like so for me though it's like having it come back to back like that is kind of I don't know, it's unnerving for me. And again, I I want I wonder if it's because of my age. I wonder if it had happened closer to me being like well, I mean, there's also the old, um, I don't know, the old sage wisdom, like, it, it's not sage wisdom. There's the old saying that death comes in, death come in threes. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe. <laughs> uh-huh. Because, well, you, you had a near death experience, but you haven't ever, like, really lost anybody like you haven't like did you lose family members before the first person yeah, that like, i who's the first person the first person that i remember for the first person i remember going to a funeral for was in fact look, I, when i was like i think we were i think my mom was probably like or i was probably like maybe like 11 10 o'clock 10 o'clock i was, I was 11 10 o'clock, 10 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> it was 9 30 almost 10 o'clock i was 10 o'clock okay i was 10 years old and my mom was being helped by a like a, a dude, an older guy who had a lot of health problems, and and it was in Williamsburg, and like we used to go and see him to check up on him, and he had like a colostomy, colostomy bag, and uh, oh he had one of them, and you he, he was you know it it was horrible, you could smell the death and like everything that was in his room. And I remember that part, and I remember being like, huh. And then I remember walking out of there and my mom being like, hey, I'm really, you know, I'm really proud of you for not mentioning about how it smells in there, like about how it was. And I didn't understand what it was at the time. And then the dude ended up dying later. I never went to this funeral. But then my grandpa D. Okay. So my grandpa D. Funeral. 
died. Uh, and we were in the room with him when he died. And oh, that's crazy. Yeah, it was the whole family in there, and we all were there with him, and we watched old Grandpa D. Rest in peace. Shout out shout out to Grandpa D. Oh, wait, hold on. Sorry, I don't have my rifle sound ready. Hold on. <laughs> Slacking. This one's for you, Grandpa D. Grandpa D, cool ass dude, bro. Uh, was a fucking like uh, Navy guy who helped did a whole bunch of stuff. He had a bunch of like, blah, blah. but don't you think like every Navy person you've ever met in your life always has a placard of things? Like I rarely ever meet a Navy person who didn't get kicked out. You know, it was like a normal, a Navy regular person. honorable like a regular discharge. Person. Yeah, and they always have okay. the little things. Sure, but Grandpa D uh, was like, I don't know how many Navy men I know though. You know a few. <laughs> you just never asked them. I. I had friends who had like a, a Navy grandpa. Did I did I say my, Navy men? I meant seamen. Mine were uh, Air Force and Army. Baby. Hey, oh, and the real fighters. And yeah. that's not true. Everybody makes fun of the Air Force. Yeah, the Air Force. Well, again, you know what do I know? But anyways, so that so and the Navy. He uh, he died, and we were all there in the room with him. This is kind of a spooky song. Um, we were all there in we're the room. We're talking about him. dead people and ghosts it's and true. shit. So, and he died, and I remember. I remember feeling his life force go away, bro. I know you're gonna say I'm oh. fucking crazy, dog. No, but I don't think you're crazy. I remember for that. specifically. I remember it, you know, and it just. How old were you? You were still around ten, probably thirteen. Okay, so that was a couple years after the old guy with the philosophy man. Yes. Okay. Um, okay. and so Grandpa D died, and I remember that. Everyone was crying and freaking out. Everybody was really sad about it. And then my family looks at me and they go, take his rings off and his bracelet off. You know, like you got to get that off him before his body, it becomes tough to like. So they're going to make the 13 year old do it? So I go over there, dude. And my, my dead grandpa D, great fucking dude, loved ice cream. Always had a hearing aid in that would buzz when you got near him. Bro, I had a little br br bristly little mustache, bro. It was like a cool fucking dude. Dead on the fucking bed, bro. Dead. A fucking dead. First experience with fucking yeah. death, bro. Dead. Gone, bro. Gone. Dead body, bro. On the fucking bed, bro. And he's fucking dead. And everybody is fucking there, dude. And everybody's crying. And they're like, Brian, you know, going, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'll fucking do it. Like trying to fucking band up, trying to like fucking dead. Body dead, bro. Skin dead. Cold. Dead, dog. Uh huh. Uh -huh. I, the teeth. You could see the dentures, like the lips, dead, gone, fresh dead bodies, no soul, gone, bro. And I, I remember like crying and like trying to get the thing off as fast as I could because I was like, I don't want to. I was like, this isn't how I. And like, so I was like, oh damn. Mm. <clears throat> and then after that, I could, I could call, I could count. You know, I mean, there's, you know, it's like those, there. I mean, it was maybe like that time. And then I had like a scout leader who died really early. He did, he had an aneurysm. and he died when he was like 35 or something. And like, we went to go see his body. And then it's like, I don't know. It's like the, but Look, I'm no stranger to death. I get it. I'm down with it. I'm a, an uh -huh. old, I'm, a, I'm an old friend with it. It's, uh, you but sure about that? Like, you sure about that? Oh, but yeah, but it's like, then what am I talking about, bro? What? But I don't, you know, I think it's just always going to be an intrinsically human thing to be scared and worried about death. I don't, think, not, I don't think anybody can truly here's the thing, come I'm not, to terms with death because it's the ultimate unknown. Yeah? It's the ultimate unknown. We have you think no, that's just, You think that's just like Buddhist monk shit? Like... We no man. No one has any fucking idea. What it's not about an idea though. I'm not talking about an you idea. Know? I'm talking so about I an acceptance. Think, I'm talking about. I mean, sure. About, you can you can accept that. I mean, it's just accepting the chaos. Accepting that when you die, you have no idea what's gonna happen, and you're fine with that. Either either there's some kind of afterlife. There's some kind of reincarnation. There's some kind of round two, or it's just nothing. It's yeah, just yeah, lights yeah. out. There is no, there is no consciousness. There is no more existence. And then, everything that you know and perceive of the universe is is over. Which is such a rattling thought that I, you know, most of us just kind of push it back, push that to us, push that to the side. Because so that's what you're thinking. You're thinking it literally. It's just <coughs> lights out. I mean, oh man, a lot of parts of me want to believe in something nice. 
but you know, a larger portion of me believes that it's just kind of going to be lights out, <laughs> you know, like <coughs> hey, here's, here's what it is, is, is it the same kind of mentality I've carried everything through life is low expectations. If there's nothing cool called it, if there's something else, I would be pleasantly surprised and I would love that. But I'm not going to be, I'll be dead. I won't be heartbroken when nothing happens because nothing will happen and I'll be dead. So it's right. a weird spot to think about because you like, I don't know, life is fucking tits, bro. Life is great. Life is a good old time. There's a lot of shit in it, but life is a good old time. Being alive is better than <laughs> When's the dead. last person who died around near you? Jesus. Where's my um... I guess it would be uh it would be that bunch. But I've had a bunch of people die on me over this uh What bunch? That year. bunch. What do you mean that bunch? Well there was those three and then there was a homie. Yeah, but you didn't really scene. know Angela Corsa. You weren't it's like you weren't No, but I also didn't know Dana Snow that well, but he died and that's that's the three people in the him and Kurt, I guess. They all died at the same time. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Angela Kurt and uh, Dana, Dana all died in like the Wasn't same Wasn't there one more? Two weeks. I don't know. I know that in the last eight months, my fourth person was uh, the homie Nathan. Oh. That's my four. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. Then, yeah. It's been pretty back-to-back then. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's been what a happened? lot of a lot of death this year. Yeah. And then, okay. Well, then, yeah. There's been a lot of death this year. There's been a lot of death this year. And then, I guess, before that... Because when I moved out here, I didn't really know a lot of people besides, like, you know, celebrity deaths that would happen. And then, you know, I, yeah. you know, I cried at, at the what about whose body? with a bunch of nerds. Huh? Who was the last body you saw then? I I don't know if I've ever seen So maybe I'm seeing more body. bodies than I need I've, to be seeing. I've, I don't think I've ever seen a dead body because it's also not... The Jews don't have open caskets. So even at a funeral, I've never seen a dead body. And you never went to a hospital with a dead body in it? Uh no, I've never I've never seen that. Well, and I was out of town when my uh, maybe that's why. I was out of town when my dad's mom died because so, you killed her, you murdered her. Yes, it was a good alibi. Um, no, she uh, she died uh, Christmas night uh, last year. Yeah, like right at like a month after I left home. She died. Um. This is, this is great. This is great music for talking about this. Yeah, I guess I guess I could change. Great, I guess great I music for that. talking about my my dead grandma. I got you. Um, and then before her, while I was still back home, my uh, my uh, my uncle Sonny died. Uh, okay, but so he but was he's old. He's my grandmother's brother. Okay, but and none of those you no funeral or anything. I went to his funeral. Yeah. I went to my uncle Sonny's. That's the last. When was that? That's the last funeral I went to. That was probably 2017. Uh, pre pre coronavirus. Mm-hmm. Yep. Pre pre. I haven't gone to a funeral since I've been out here. I haven't been to a funeral. And mm-hmm. then you know I, I talk about it a lot when I was uh, growing up. I went to a lot of shivas for a lot of dead homies. For a lot of for a lot of my uh, grandma's dead homies. Oh yeah. 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 Well, you know, grandma. Grandma lost somebody she knew. And Mom they and never dad have the body. Mom and dad. Oh, well, okay. not at the shiva. That's that's after the. No, burial. I get what you're saying. You yeah, know? you go you go back to the house. So after you've you never the body. gone to a viewing. That's crazy. I've never I've never gone to like a a gentile a, like a Catholic viewing where it's an open casket. I've been to a bunch of a bunch of Jewish funerals. I think I've been to three or four while I was growing up. Yeah. And then my uncle son is huh. the last one, but I've never seen a body because every time it's closed casket, yeah, yeah, yeah. they're at the head of that's the, crazy. Head of the Jewish the Jewish well, funeral maybe, home. I don't know. Maybe that has something to do with it. I I feel very, in a way, kind of like arm's length from it. Although all the death in my life that I've experienced yeah. has kind of been like, yeah. it hasn't been right up on me. Ah, we'll see. Then that's my that's gran- what my it grandma, is. My grandma, I guess, my grandma would guess would be the closest one. But again, I wasn't really there for a funeral. I missed her funeral because I was out here. It was the middle of coronavirus. I couldn't fly back home for her funeral. So, you know, all the like. I cr- maybe I maybe that is her, something uh, about it. Zoom, 
her zoom wake. Her zoom wake. Yeah, that was fu- that was fucking. Where you were like not wearing pants, like uh, yeah, <laughs> your done. grandma's zoom wake. I, I was fully clothed in my grandma's zoom wake. I don't know, man. I um, I uh, I don't I it I just wonder. I mean, I think maybe it's all just maybe it's all just in my head, dog. Maybe I'm just experiencing things that I I'm just not used to that I'm not happy with you know what I mean like and that's fine that's not a problem I, I don't have a problem with it in any in any way I just wonder man damn bro it's like maybe it's because it has some maybe well you know maybe it's because it's a uh, maybe it's like a Chinese lunar year I don't, I, I, I know the, other, the other problem that I think I have I don't know I was gonna talk about the afterlife what do you will hit it? That's think what this about, whole thing's think about, about. Every every uh, everything that is has died. Think about the billions of animals. Do you think animals go to an afterlife? Do you think they have their own? Because like you know, I know there's religions and they're like animals hmm. don't don't get into human heaven. It's like well, what happens to them? I don't know. I don't know the specifics. I never asked a priest or nothing. Uh-huh. But like. What's gonna happen to old Tino? Right. Where's Mojo at? Right. These little liquefied bodies in a in a thing, but where he at though? Right. You know, so I kinda like Is it is it almost I, like um that Robin Williams movie where oh, he, yeah. his dog dies and then he gets his dog in heaven? Whatever. Yeah, what dreams make what come. Dreams they come with what Cuba Gooding Jr. Yeah, where Cuba Gooding Jr. is his son. <laughs> yeah, that was that was crazy. I you know I don't know, man. I, my, for me personally, oh, in my old age, as I'm getting older, you know, as, as I get near as the as sweet, I'm... sweet release of death. Um, Thank you, Mr. What are you, 32, 33? Like 62, dog. Exactly. My soul is 62, bro. I don't know what to okay, do. Okay, perfect. Um, I just, I got to think that, I don't think there's a heaven, bro. Okay. This is my heaven. <laughs> or in the way that like Papa Jack cheese. Yeah, I don't think there's like I don't know. I don't I don't, I don't like to think there's a and I certainly don't think there's a heaven in the way there's like a bleach heaven, you know, cuz I think that the bleach heaven scenario is kind of fucked Describe up. Describe the beach bleach uh, heaven to me. It's very hierarchical, dog. You uh, can literally die and still be a peasant. Like that's horrifying to yeah, me. Yeah, that sounds, like That sounds so bueno. <laughs> it does not sound like a good time at all. And so it's like I don't think there's anything like that. But I I got to think that there's energy. We're energy. I know that. We know that. I can't prove it. You know what I mean? That's not my fault. I just, I can't prove it. I don't know the numbers. But it's like, we are energy. That's a fact. Scientific fact. The Matrix proved it. We're batteries. (laughs) We're (laughs) like, get serious, man. Get serious. There's, look. I mean, uh, all jokes aside, it's like, we're energy. I got to believe that we all get back together as energy. And whether that's your soul or whatever, I don't know if I'll feel anything, but maybe, I, maybe I'll feel something. I'd like to think like, as you're like dying, bro, like you get to feel warm. I mean, a lot of guys are like, it's cold. I feel like I'm dying. But I like to think maybe that's like a cold. That's it's like a hot, a heat. Well, it's so hot that it feels cool. I think what, when people are like, it's so cold, Johnny. It's so cold. What I think that is, is all of the blood in your body rushes from your extremities to that wound area to heal it, to try and heal it, even though it's evidently futile. That's why all the blood rushes out. You know, the blood is leaving other end parts of the body. The blood is what keeps us warm. That's why I think people say, I feel so cold, Johnny. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's usually when people are like bleeding out. Yeah. That's when you see that in movies. You know what I mean? So you don't like the I don't think I don't think just automatically dying means you're gonna feel all cold and gross, you know? Yeah. Like think about I like think you'll be think warm. about people who have like brain aneurysms and yeah. like they're dead in a and second. It just happens. Yeah, and they're just dead. Their body is I still like warm until the warm. blood they're still warm until the blood stops circulating. I'm talking about a spiritual warmth. I'm uh-huh. not talking about oh. a body warmth. Um that's why I said not like the cold way of it. I'm saying, in my, I like to think that, like, if you were to close your eyes, okay, and like, you're holding your loved one's hands, and you're like, this is it, and your body's 
giving up. You can feel your fucking life going out of your fucking body, bro. You're like drawing breaths and breaths. It's getting a little harder and harder. And then your head gets a little fucking like, it, it gets a little fucking, you know, like when you hold your breath too long, you know, and like it, you start getting really fucking lightheaded, right? And like, you think about all the dudes who like asphyxiates themselves when they're when they're jacking off and the and yeah, they're... that's what I'm gonna be thinking about in my last moments. Well, yeah, no, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, <laughs> I'm saying, think about it in the way of a dude who's willing who's to doing risk. Who, yeah, 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 who knows that when you hit that weird high, you know, as blood is you know getting cut off from your fucking head, like, uh-huh. you know, uh-huh. so that high, right? Yeah, and then it keeps going. That feeling is so good. I think Kumail Nanjiani said it once. He was like. <clears throat> that dude feels so good. Better than coming, dude. Better than coming, dude. That he's willing to risk it all and keep fucking going because that head high is so fucking ferocious. So, I like to think. I mean. That when you die, you feel warm, like autoerotic asphyxiation, but it's like your head, you, you go, you go through, you you. Pierce the fucking veil, I could homie. imagine if it was nice and peaceful, then sure. Yes, I could imagine that's that's kind of what it would feel like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bro, that's fucking crazy, like, right? Like, if somebody went peacefully, it's like, I see a warm, bright light. Yeah. I'm walking off towards And your me. head's doing that yeah, crazy sure. little head thingy? That's my heaven, bro. And then when you go to the other side, it's just that feeling forever. And maybe you come back. I don't know, like... Maybe you do. Maybe you come back as a baby or something, but you would never know. I don't. My heaven, you never know. Like, you just kind of like run the gambit again as energy. But so I don't think you go there, anywhere with clouds. So is there an afterlife? A finite amount of this energy, or is it hypothetically infinite? Because what you're what you're saying is we are all some semblance of of a like a group of energy. There's some kind of One energy, giant form of energy. Yeah. So is it? Endless? Is that why there's more and more people being born every year uh, opposed to those, like, I think I think the number of dead outnumber the people of alive something I'd say crazy. So. Um, so is it, we're all just sa- sharing this well, you have to you have to think, dog, that, people's worth of energy because there weren't 8 that covers billion everything. people. Everything is energy, homie. And I'm not trying to sound like a fucking weirdo so here. It's almost like we we sucked the energy out from like extinct species. Don't think sucked. We <laughs> just the energy is appropriated. Like it's uh each. I don't like, the, I don't like appropriation don't like either. Uh, it's di- <laughs> it's like divided. Either. You know, like it, it, like like whatever force, whatever it is, whatever so the energy if is, the is human allocated. Energy force is a little bit greater than like a whale's energy force. There are going to be less whales and more people. Well, you're thinking about That's why it there's to no one, more you're dodos. Th- you're thinking about a one to one ratio. I here. guess I'm yeah, trying to yeah. I'm trying to bust it's it down one and to break one. it down. It's I like, know it's some weird ethereal thing. Yeah, that can't yeah. Really it's be like every every little bit gets a little bit. So it's but, like if the question is, oh, does like does my human value of my life, the energy, my soul energy, is it more than Tino's energy? Is it more than whatever's well, energy? Well, you're positive I'm that saying, everything shares the exact same energy, right? Yeah. So I'm saying, is this hypothetical energy limited to a certain amount? That's why there can only be a certain amount of things on at least the Earth that we know about. I think it could we, be limited, but it's such a number that's so kind big, of like grander, infinite thing that like I, mean, I don't want to do almost, turtles all the way down in my head. And then the other thing is, if hypothetically there were life on other planets, do we all share that same? Yes. Afterlife, that same energy thing. So hypothetically, you could meet an alien in heaven. Yes. All right. Crazy. Hypothetically. I like it. Hypothetically, I, I every like piece it. of energy like and everything we ever discovered is all the same little bit of energy. There's always. That's why, like sometimes, uh, there was this thing. Like they say, uh, you know, I, you know, this thing has been on for so long. I probably said this before to Sam, but like there's, uh, you know, a theory that it's like uh, every little. There's a little piece of energy in everybody. There's electrons. You know, there's atoms down to the very basic building blocks. Right. And during the explosion of the Big Bang, you know, some pieces hit each other. You know, yeah. and sometimes the people that you meet were the little, like they have a little bit of the atom of the Big Bang from when you met. 
You know what I mean? And as you get hit, some of them stick together and they stay together for a long time. And then some of those pieces split off into pieces. And that's kind of how long you you stay with the person or, or you're around a person. <laughs> or kind of just overall, the my idea as a whole of the people that I've met, the things that I've done, you know, like certain nickels, certain stones, you know, certain things that I look at and I feel certain connections with for no positive reason or any reason or any for anything. For the reasons that sometimes I'm just walking around and I'll look at a tree and I'll start fucking tearing up and start crying. Like things okay, like. I don't know about that. But. Well, I'm just saying like or the times that you'll just walk around and just fucking. Well, I mean, you get depressed all the time. It's like, you know, things trigger your depression. So it's like. But but it's like. But each look. So that, you know, it's like every little piece of that is like. Maybe you just skim it. Maybe you just pass it by. You know, I, the scales that I'm talking about are so small and so, you know, it's like kind of hard to, you know, get down to envision. That kind of but it's like, imagine, yeah, imagine of, that of each infinitesimal fucking things. Imagine each person each you've been with, each thing, they had a little piece of something that you've known, uh, you know, from the, a time before, you know, and it's, mm. you know, it's all connecting. It's all, it's all mm. one giant I dig so it. that's just my. I can, I can dig it. I can dig it. That's just my. You know. That's just my theory, and that's just kind of like. But I'd be interested. I mean, if you. So you. But what do you think? As I check these cameras to make sure they're good, <laughs> and I give you a chance to talk without doing sound effects. I mean, here's. I don't know. It's like. I'm thinking about also. Kind of like. We're talking about how it's all... You, you brought up the Big Bang. Let me start there. You brought up the Big Bang and how all that energy exploded from that one little negative central point outwards. But now I'm thinking about how the science says that either it's all just going to keep going out, everything's going to keep expanding outwards to a point where nothing's touching anything and it, it just kind of can't go anymore, or we'll hit a point where it all... It all pops out so far that it, oh, God, I want to get it right. Damn you, marijuana. Don't do drugs, kids, unless you want to be cool. But Would it help if you wrapped it? No, I'm trying to actually remember the science of it. And if I wrap, it won't be accurate. If I drop some mad science. Oh, some Will's science here. Bars. Oh, that's. <laughs> that, <laughs> put on, oh, you want to put on your glasses, Grandma? Are, was, the garage, was the garage open? Yeah, I believe. <laughs> Sorry guys. Let somebody somebody came guess, in. Guest in the studio. Somebody came a in a little game. hot. Woo! <laughs> oh boy. Anyways. Come some slack. He can't see. You know well, this. So uh He's blind. He's blind, ladies and gentlemen. You, tell, you thought he could see this whole time. That's true. You tell me what you think. I mean, you mentioned it before. You're in the middle. So to you, you can't, you're not taking a stance. It's, it's, I, you know, I don't have any kind of evidence to really feel like I can take a stance one way or the other. It's kind of like, it's the ultimate, sometimes it's faith, the ultimate gamble, baby. Sometimes faith, there's it's no the evidence in faith. I know. There's no evidence in you faith. Know. I know. But what do you think? Preach, but, preach for you. What would you tell somebody who was... Just lost and confused and sad. I mean, I think the typical thing that somebody would do in that situation is like, "Don't worry, things are gonna get better. You know, it's gonna be okay." Do you, what do you do in those in those moments? Do you stand? Do you hit them with a the standard? Well, you know, well, like, what do you do? What do you do when confronted with death? You know, head on. What are like the things that I, you say? What would I say to a man about to jump off a building? No. What would you say to your girlfriend if she came home to you and told you her friend died? Or what would you do? When your mom calls you because, you know, your dad's, you know, passed or like, what would, what are the things that you do? What is, you know, do you, you like, what is your, how do you, you know, what do you do if you had a younger friend who came to you and told you something and, and you like, what, what do you hit them with to, do you just hit them with the bare bones? There's, you know, I'm in the middle. I don't care about, you know, you know, it's all about, I'm not gonna, you know, keeping I'm my expectations low. In the in the middle of grieving. Well, then what would you the, what would you do? My, then? Oh well, you know, don't worry about it because their lights are probably out and they're they're not dealing with anything anymore. That's not that's not what anybody in the thralls of grief want to hear. It's what usually, would you do? Then? It's usually my condolences. I'm so sorry. I understand this can be a really rough time. Dealing with death is never an easy thing. You just have to like keep on keeping on, my guy. Spend spend your moment in grief. 
Don't be afraid of You'd it. hit him with the keep on keeping on? You had to keep on keeping on, my guy. Whoa. It's, it's, You'd hit me with the keep on keeping on? If, all right. If your shorty, forbid, if your shorty came to God you, forbid. if your shorty came to you and was like, uh, you know, and, and like, she was like, well, maybe not your shorty right now. Okay. Well, uh, how about a, sh how about, oh boy. Uh, I don't know. Uh, it's, What's, you don't know anybody. E you, uh, know, you know, like three people. Uh, you, you, know, uh, you know, like uh, you know, like okay. four people and three of them are here I'm in this house. About, I'm thinking about when <laughs> was running around because his old lady died. That's a perfect example, yeah. dog. You hit him with the... I didn't, you hit I old didn't, I didn't hit him with the keep on keeping on. So then on. let's... That hit me with... Look, okay, so then I'm I, like... It was I'm a like, lot of... It, you know what it was. It was a lot of condolences. It was a lot of, damn, that really sucks. I'm so sorry. You're grieving. Spend your time grieving. Don't worry about being sad about this. Okay, it so sucks. then he's like... And then, and then he, Okay, so then he's like, hey, I guess you're right, homie. But I guess like... <laughs> what do you think's gonna happen, fool? Like, what do you yeah, think's gonna... He, yeah. What do you so. think's gonna happen? Like, what do you think? What do you think? You know, do you think she's gonna be okay, fool? Hey fool, why are you hitting that bong? I'm opening up to you. And he's like, hey, hey fool, what do you think? You know? Like, I think she's gonna fucking have little wings, fool. And she's that's, gonna fucking. And that's where she's at, bro. Okay, maybe I'm being a little funny because I got a lot of hate in me right now. On oh, one on one, though. Think maybe I don't know, man. I don't know. Maybe, uh, is there? What do you? Th what do I think? I'm. I'm nah, see, because now you're. <laughs> see, because I'm. Okay, okay, all right. I'm gonna hit you with that. Okay, but no, seriously, seriously, seriously. <laughs> hey, fool, seriously though. <laughs> hey, fool, seriously. No, but seriously. So he's like, hey, man, like. He's like, yeah, I just don't know. Like, I don't know, man. I don't know. He was like, what do, you, you know, like, what do you think, man? I think she's dead, bro. Oh no! Six feet really... in the ground, getting munched on my worm. I'm sorry, dude. You know I didn't say that. That's to you. fucked up. Well you then, fucking, what do you? Do. Then what do you do? Uh, fucking, what do you do? I already told you. I already told you. Well, to fucking play it out. What do you do? Hey man, I'm sorry. Hey, hey. Uh huh. Listen, your hands warm. <laughs> 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 Whoa. Well, uh, uh, all right. Well, Piece look. Of shit. You know. Piece of shit. I don't know, man. I don't know. Bro, look, look, okay, I look, told okay, you, look. Here's somebody a, can fine, you fine, can be with them. fine. You can hang then we out move. With them. You can then keep all right. Them. Then the next fucking thing is with the okay. Then let's talk about the other side of it, bro. What's something that you do? You know what I would. You know what I would do. I remember when uh, I was in high school and the homie's dog died. All right. It's hey, for yeah, when I when I, I mean I remember like the first oh. Huh, yeah, a pet death is really hard, especially when you're a kid. Like, I remember when my guinea pig died. That shit was the roughest, the roughest around. That's that's probably the only dead body I've ever held. If we're being straight up, my dead guinea pig? Yeah. Um, maybe technically Mojo. But yeah, oh, I, yeah, that's right. But I don't like to think about that, so. But, I, mean, I don't like to think about that one. Uh. Doggy Heaven. He's up there in Doggy Heaven right now, playing out the scenes of All Dogs Go to Heaven. Yes, he came back to save a little orphan girl who's going to be sold into sex trafficking. Sorry. Jesus Christ. Jesus I'm not Christ. sorry for Mel Gibson. <laughs> Mel Gibson, we're sorry. Fuck Mel Gibson. Don't He's listen to him. Semi. Don't listen to him. <laughs> fuck you, Mel Gibson. Do Honestly, if Mel Gibson's watching this, fuck you, Mel Gibson. Don't listen to him. The views, yeah, of, Vetterman, you, the views of Vetterman don't reflect me. <laughs> okay. Um, also, we're pro Israel. No, I'm just kidding. No. Jesus, guys. Um, um. Okay. So, <laughs> well then, okay, what's something that you do... To remember, do you memorialize people, or there is there something that you do? You take a day off for somebody who's died. Like, is there something not a day off, but like, is there? Do you ever go back somewhere? Like, I go back to where I dropped off Mr. Wigglesworth, my cat. You know, like, 
I he's mean, buried out there in Virginia. You know, every time I go home, sure. I don't see I mean, his you thing. know, we go, we go to my grandpa's funeral or whatever. Do we you? Can, do you by yourself? His, have you ever? Do you light a candle? Gone, gone to his uh, his headstone now. Not no. like by myself. Yeah, do you ever light a candle? Or, like eat a sandwich or like you know? You, that's like a, it's like a whole holiday for the Jews is lighting a candle for, for uh, for our dead. In memorial. Is that the first day of Hanukkah? No, it's it's uh Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> keep it down from the fucking peanut gallery over there. It's when the <laughs> fuck is that? I'm I'm such a bad What is it, Mia Mar? What is it? Bad Jew. When's, well, what is, what is it, Mia Mar? Zoe, when's the one when we light candle for, for dead people? <laughs> oh boy! Oh. See what you did. Yeah, See what you I did. Now she won't did. help us. You piece of shit. I'm my own worst uh, enemy. Okay. Well, so you don't do anything. Not currently. Not. And my I'm not asking life. you to. I'm not I, saying honestly, this to make you feel bad. Honestly, like, I imagine once I lose like one of my parents, that's when I'll really start caring. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Well, again, That's, you've never really seen a body before. Like, you've never... So it's like you like you said, death has been an arm length away yeah, from you. Pets. You've never... Dead, I've seen dead bodies of pets. That's about it. Yeah. That's about it. Um, human bodies, not so much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Unless I am severely repressing something that I just am it. Oh, my God. Just not remembering. <laughs> am it. That I am it. Start remembering. breaking now. Um, <laughs> um, no, you know, like... It's not like when them boys went over to, to WW2 over in Germany and came back yeah. with their all, buddies in body bags. Up. Yeah. yeah, on Mountain Dew. Um, I mean, even my father, who was at Kent State and watched friends die when they were shot by uh, the military police. So, never had. I've never had anything like that. He was. Yeah, but wait. Why did you bring? One. Did he? Did does? Do you think he memorializes them? Do you think every time I'm, the, I'm, the shooting happens? I, you know. Do you think he pours one out for his homies? <laughs> no, he doesn't pour one out for homies. You don't he think doesn't so? do that. No, he probably just He doesn't drink? Not really. But he probably does on the day his homies are. My dad, as long as I've known him, hasn't really been a drinker. There was a moment when I was like 18, 19, he would drink a little bit more, but he doesn't really drink. My dad's, my dad's always been a lightweight, according to him. That's why I'm saying maybe he goes out and he drives out to the fucking fields somewhere and he fucking plants a little flower and he fucking he chugs might. one back he's, for the homies. He's not letting me know if he's doing it, so. He's shot. I, I, I will. I'll ask him if he memorializes the, the homies he knows that have died. He's got, he's got a lot of them at this point, though. My dad is 77, so. Uh, he's, um, he's up there. I mean, there was, I remember one of the. First things was when my uncle David died, which was just my one of my dad's good buddies. Um, oh, not a real uncle. Not a real uncle. Well, I mean, he's a real uncle. Uh, real, real heart. enough. You know, he, I, again, didn't really know him. He, uh, he died when I was, God, I want to say like four or five. Damn. Very young, and I just remember the only thing I remember is when we went to his apartment to help grab some stuff that my dad wanted. And they sat me down in, the t- in front of the TV, and I watched uh, the OG Superman on TV. Nice. Yeah. I just remember the OG Superman playing while they were <coughs> going through his stuff. Um, Sh- I, uh, Zoe asked how the shiva was. That wasn't... I, I don't remember a shiva for that. I, I probably didn't go to his shiva. I don't remember going to his funeral either. I just remember going to his apartment like right after he died to go pick up some stuff. And that's it. Um, but then again, I don't really remember a lot from being four or five. Like I'm pulling up shit, yeah. pulling up deep memories. Yeah. Oh. We're going deep in the Rolodex over here. Well, uh, I, I know, uh, man. I go and see Mr. Wigglesworth when I go home. Um, I mean, I know where all my guinea pigs are buried in the backyard cause I had to bury them all. Nice. Nice. That's yeah. pretty hardcore. Yeah. Uh, you got there. Being, being 14 year, years old in the, in, in the, the rain, in, in like the middle of November. <laughs> The, the ground is frozen, so it's it was father. Yeah, I think I got two two feet deep before I was like, "All right, this is how deep you're going, buddy." Sorry, you're not going six feet under. You were like, "Can you take me higher?" Yeah, sang a nice little song for the game. Yeah, what's um, up? What? Honestly, when he died, I, I sang uh, uh, "I'll Cover You" from Rent. To my dead shut the king. fuck up. No, you did. I think I think I did. Will you please? Will you give us a little bit of it? 
<clears throat> I'm going to go for it. Zoe asked if he was going for it. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Can I sing it? Do you know it? Uh, here, what's it called? Uh, I'll cover you. I'll sing my version. I, I know Live it. I've heard it before. In my house, I'll be your shelter. Just pay me back. <laughs> <laughs> Keep going. I'm giving your guinea pigs a turn. Add a girl. You fucking get him, mommy. She said, ah, hold on. She fucking She got me. She got me. Hold on. Hey, I haven't sang that song in forever, so I'm not afraid to get some of the. Lo- you don't even know any of the words, motherfucker. Bro, I got this. All right, what's the next lyrics? Cover me. Cover me with your love Burn it, burn it, burn it. Loving me Underneath the bell rug Underneath the bell rug, nice HIV is what I need for me And even though you've got it I still love you, baby Cover me, just cover me in your AIDS quill, babe. <laughs> and then it breaks down in like a, a dance number. Did oh, I get okay. close though? No. Uh, no, not at all. Uh, not at all. You even heard me sing the beginning half of it. And you uh, went in a totally different direction. And well, you were singing Cover Me when the song is when the, when the song is I'll Cover You. Yeah, but it's this is the uh this is the call and response. Part no. of the song. No. You I must have not seen the version of Rent that I've seen because Oh yeah. There's wait, a wait, call and response here. Did you see the version that was in Amer- <laughs> Team America's <laughs> fucking world please? Cover me. Um, Alright, now sing the song. Now sing the musical's ending number. Everyone has AIDS. <clears throat> the rent is due. <laughs> <laughs> you owe me rent. No, I don't. You owe me rent. Okay. Well, nice. well okay. Well, it's about an hour. You know, and uh, We're right I, at about I think that's good. An hour is pretty solid. We can kick it up as we as we slowly kick in, but I think we're back. Uh, we're back. Baby. Final thoughts on Can't death, man. Uh, it is inevitable. It comes for us all, and welcome it as a friend. Or don't. Um, me fight. You fight know, fight against the dying of the light. Yeah, there you go. Death Rage. Is- Rage against all unseen for scenes. Yeah. And know in your soul of souls that while you fade into the night, it shall not be for naught, for you shall fight on in a different light. Whoa. All right, that's it. But also, uh, you know, death is only the beginning, I guess, right? Some do say. Some do say. You know, and maybe the next time veteran, next time we do this, veteran will know how he feels about death. Maybe the next time we, we do this, probably not. we'll talk about life. You know? Hey, it's a wonderful thing. But uh, you know, rest in peace to the homies. Yep. Uh, this one goes out to you. Uh, but also uh, enjoy your life. Fetterman said earlier, life is good. Yeah. Uh, he said life is beautiful. Honestly, he's not wrong. Fetterman used to be down in the dumps. He used to be a stray man. But now he stands before you, a changed brother, man, with a purpose, you know? And I think that's cool. So uh, shout out to Angela Corsa. Shout out to Dana Snow. Shout out to his homie Nathaniel. Shout out to Kurt. Uh, shout out to everybody, bro. We hope you're out shout there, out bro. We hope you're out there. there in your fucking beautiful, gorgeous light, man, just fucking swimming through whatever version of your own heaven is, dog, because you deserve that much, Amen. you know? And so uh, with that being said... <coughs> Remember to love each breath. other Stay safe <gasps> And dream the dream of a thousand dreams Hit him with the death rap Uh, uh, uh Yo, I only like women Who know that death is coming So you better get ready See, cause every morning that you wake up It might end, uh, yeah This song is about death This song is about dying This song is about living This song is about lying Underneath the rug from the song That the rent song was about Called Cover Me Up Yeah 
This is actually the other part of the song. This is secretly still a continuation of the Rent song. Oh this is actually part of the Cover Me Up song. This, this is the Lim and Well, Lim and Well, Lim and Well, down. This is the song that I sing about death. Yeah, cause I am the man. I am the man who knows all about death. Oh, death. Oh, uh. death you are. It's a musical, but also a rap. Oh, death. Yeah. Uh. Oh, death you are. Uh. A little bitch. I'm a humble mortuary uh, employee. I only like to hang out with the bodies at night. I sleep with them inside of the refrigerator, but it's fine, cause I'm a musical guy. That's right. Just because it's in a musical means it's loud. That's right. If you want to murder people, it's completely fine as long as you do it with a magical Broadway musical number style. Uh, okay. uh, I love the bodies. Yeah, see, it's technically a rap, but also a song. See, I'm technically going in between rapping and singing and rapping and watch me sing and rap. Watch me sing and rap. Watch me sing and rap. This is technically considered a musical. I'm technically a musical genius. Now I'm going back to sleep with the bodies. Christopher Walken breakdown. Oh, wow. It's me, Christopher Walken. I'm here to tell you that I'm walking down the sidewalk of Devon. I need to know what's going on and what the thing is. Oh, I love these bodies, even though they don't have a pulse. So if you gotta stop me, you gotta get through my awesome dance moves. Watch me break it down with these bodies, girl, now. Watch me break it down with these bodies, girl, now. Filled up with formaldehyde. Yeah, I love the smell of a dead body, but it's fine. It's a musical, don't worry about it, don't feel weird. This is a musical just like Sweeney Todd. Except I sleep with the bodies. I don't kill the bodies and disappear inside of meat pies. Sleep with the bodies, it's okay. It's okay, cause it's a musical. Breakdown, it's a musical. Don't worry about it, it's right. not weird. It's Necrophilia a musical. is allowed, as long as it's in a Broadway style musical. Murder's okay, as long as you're singing, uh. Murder's okay, as long as you're rapping, uh. Murder is cool, death is cool, life is cool. Never forget about it. Lin-Manuel Miranda appropriated rap and sold it to white people, <laughs> and you motherfuckers <laughs> fell for it. So if there's gonna be a death to anything, it's you, Lin Manuel Miranda. Miranda we're coming, we're for, coming you. for you, Lin Manuel Miranda. <laughs> Tonight at the Superdome, I got five. I got you for five, five whole minutes, minutes. Lin Manuel Miranda. <laughs> Goodbye, it's going everyone. Down. Goodbye, it's going down, Lin Manuel Goodbye. Miranda. <laughs>